Okay, so today we're going to learn how to find probabilities using permutations. So first thing we're going to talk about is the basic counting principle. Now, for the basic counting principle, we sort of did this already. What you do is you take the number of outcomes and you just multiply it. And that's going to give you the number of ways that you can do things. So like, for example, when we did the previous lesson, when we were talking about flipping the coin and say, rolling a number cube, we knew in the coin there were two outcomes and in the number cube there were six. So 12 times six, and I know that there were 12 outcomes. And we listed all those outcomes when we did um, the notes on 12-1. So, um, so just be aware that this is the basic counting principle. And all you're gonna do is, if they're only asking you to find outcomes, how many there are and not list them, you just take how many outcomes there are for each event and multiply them. So in this example here, where we have three shirts and four pants, you just take the number of shirts and you multiply it by the number of pants and I know I can make 12 different combinations of outfits. So for example, if we had shirt number one with and shirt number two and shirt number three, and then down here if I put pant one, pant two, pant three, pant four, I can make all these different combinations. I could do shirt one with pant one, and actually let me just draw lines, shirt, and I can make a combination of shirt number one with pant number one. Then I could do shirt number, two, shirt number one with pant number two, shirt number one with pant three, and shirt one with pant four. So I can make all these combinations. Then I could do the same thing with shirt two and put it with each one of the pants. So shirt two would go with pant one, shirt two, pant two, shirt two, pant three, shirt two, pant four. And then lastly, I could go from shirt three to each of the four pants. So then this could be shirt three, pant one, shirt three, pant two, shirt three, pant three, shirt three, pant four. And if you go back and count all these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, notice it's the same answer that I got just by multiplying the number of shirts times the number of pants. So if they just ask you to find the total number of outcomes, don't worry about listing everything. So then here again, another example, six flavors of ice cream, three different cones, six times three, and you can make 18 different single, single scoop ice cream combinations. So this is the basic counting principle. Let's go on to this one. So when we're talking about permutations, permutations means that when we make our combinations, order matters. Now, and here it says, in how many ways can you arrange the letters in the word mouse? So I'm gonna count how many letters I have in the word mouse, and I have one, two, three, four, five letters. So I'm gonna make five blank lines here. So if I want to make an organized list, it's gonna take me a while because there's a lot of combinations that I could rearrange these letters. But no, for my first letter, or for my first slot, I've got five choices of letters. I can either put the M, the O, the U, the S, or the E. Now, once I put a letter here, then I can't use that letter again. So now for my second spot, I've only got four choices of letters. And then I'll keep going, three, then two, then one. Then what I'm gonna go back and do is multiply these numbers and this will give me all of the different ways that I can arrange the letters in the word mouse. So five times four is 20, times three is 60, times two is 121, 120 ways. Now, 
what this technique that I just did by starting at a number and then counting down and then multiplying them, this is called a factorial. And when you see it on your calculator, factorial is an excla exclamation point. So it's not like a, a something used in grammar. This is actually something used in math. So to represent this problem, I would do on my calculator five exclamation point, and then once you hit enter, it's gonna be 120. So you don't really need to find the exclamation point on your calculator. If, you're, if I give you a problem on the test next week and I said, figure out the value of five exclamation point, you could just do this and just do five times four times three times two times one and you're gonna tell me it's 120. However, if you have that button on your calculator, you don't have to worry about entering five times four times three times two times one. You can just hit five and then the exclamation point. And again, it's gonna be in a different spot on everybody's calculator. Search for it, don't do it now. You can do it later while you're doing the homework. So this is called factorial. The next question, is going to ask us in how many ways can you arrange three of the letters in the word orange? Now, I'm gonna introduce some variables to you, and I know my notes are a little bit out of order. So this is the formula I'm gonna use. It's P, and then we have an N and an R, and it's equal to N exclamation point over N minus R exclamation point. Now, if you know where this button is on your calculator, all you have to do is figure out what the variable n is and what the variable r is. n is always going to be larger than the r. So n in this problem is the number of letters in the word orange. And if you count them, O-R-A-N-G-E, there are six letters and then I'm ranging three of the letters, so that's gonna be my R value. Now, I could also do this question similar to what I did um, previously. I could also say, okay, there are six letters, and I'm only taking three of them. So another way without using this formula is I could take six times five times four, and I'm only trying to arrange three of them and this would also give me 120. Now this is coincidental that both of these answers are the same. It's not always going to be 120. But let me show you how we could work with the formula that I wrote here. So n factorial is six exclamation point. So six minus three, I'm going to do the parentheses and I get three exclamation point. Now, what I'm gonna do here is six times five times four times three times two times one. That's what six exclamation point means. And then for the denominator, three times two times one. Now, instead of you know having to do all this, I could simplify this. See, I have a three and a three, a two and a two, a one and a one. So then all I have to do now is multiply six times five times four, and my answer to this problem is 120. Now, again, if you know where the exclamation point is on your calculator, you could also do six exclamation point divided by three exclamation point, or write it out. Sometimes you'll see this on a non-calculator part, so just be aware of how you could do it by hand. So the next slide, I'm gonna actually be doing back, actually shows you what a factorial is. So again, whatever number you have that's in front of an exclamation point, <clears throat> what that means is you do like a countdown. So for example, if I have three exclamation point, this would really mean three times two times one. It's like a countdown and then you multiply the three numbers. 
and you get six. If I had 10 exclamation point. Now, this is where if they ask you to find the factorial of a really big number, then using the button would be a lot faster than having to do on your calculator 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one hit enter and you get this really big number three million six hundred and twenty eight thousand eight hundred so if you know where this exclamation point is on your calculator you can get away with just entering the number 10 hitting the exclamation point and it'll go right to this answer however if your calculator does not have the factorial button then you would have to key all of this in um, you just have to be careful that you don't miss anything it's not that hard it just be very careful and make sure you're pressing the button appropriately okay next is the premium um, this formula with you which is what we just saw so a permutation again is an arrangement of objects in which order is important so for example flipping a coin two times and then a tail and a head this is order is important if it just said you're gonna flip two coins or throw them up in the air and see how they land if order doesn't isn't important how they land then this would be the same combination. But for a permutation, these are two different things. So you would flip the first coin, write down what you get, flip the second coin, write down what you would get. So permutation is when order is important. So um, the number of permutations of n objects is given by this. Again, that would be like arranging the letters in the word mouse. You, it, they're not asking you to take maybe only two at a time. If they ask you to rearrange everything, then it's just the factorial. Now, if they're asking you to rearrange only part of what you have, then you would use this formula with the N and the R. So again, an example of this, let's say I tell you you have five objects Let's say we have five trophies and we're going to arrange them on a shelf. However, we don't want to arrange all five. We only want to put and display two at a time. So the five is my N and the two is my R. So what we'll do here is P and then five and two. And again, we're going to do the formula five exclamation point five minus two exclamation point. So this becomes five exclamation point over three. Again, if you're not using your calculator, expand it out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stop the three there. Actually, I'll just show the whole thing. Times two times one. And then over here, three times two times one. Notice these will cancel out. And I'm just left with five times four. And I could take and arrange this two. Word? Yes. We can't. We see can't it. see it. Huh. Okay. Let's see. All right. Um. Can you see it now? No. No. Hmm. All right. Let me. I'm gonna. Next example, your band has written 12 songs and plans to record nine of them for a CD. In how many ways can you arrange the songs on the CD? So for this one, the bigger number is always your N. So my N is going to be 12 and my R is 9. So again, I'm going to use the formula N factorial N minus R factorial. So 12 factorial over 12 minus nine. And expand this out. So this is gonna become three factorial. So really what I'm doing here is 12 factorial over three factorial. So it becomes 12 times 11 times 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five 
times four. And then I'm gonna just stop here at three factorial because I'm gonna just put the three factorial there and then it'll cancel. Now I've gotta go back now and multiply all of these numbers up to here, 12 times 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and that'll give me my answer. So there are 79,833,600 ways to arrange those 12 songs, choosing nine of them at a time on that CD. Lots of ways. Okay, we have two more examples. Pretty good on example two. Let's try example three. Okay, so now what they're asking us to do is use the permutation or use the factorials, um, but find a probability. So here it says, for a town parade, you will ride on a float with your soccer team. There are 14 floats in the parade, and their order is chosen at random. Find the probability that your float is first and the float with the school chorus is second. So I'm trying to find probability that I'm first and then the chorus is the second float. So we know that there is a total of 14 so again, remember probability is what we're shooting for over the total. So we're shooting for this. So if I know that there were 14 floats and I know I'm taking out my float and the chorus, that's only gonna leave 12 floats left. So 12 factorial over the total number of floats. So now I just do 12 and I, I could do this as 12 factorial, and then I'm gonna do 14 times 13 times 12 factorial, and then I can simplify here. The 12 factorials, this becomes a one and a one, so all I have to do is 14 times 13, and my answer here is one over 182. That would be the probability that my float is first and the chorus would be the second float in the parade. One more slide. Anna, there's the previous screen. Any other questions? All right, so that is it. Um, have a wonderful day, and I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Bye. Bye, Miss Corey. Bye. Bye, Miss Corey. Bye. Brianna, you good? Now, this is the notation. So numbers two and three are pretty simple. We're just gonna plug these into the formula but we'll go back and do this again. So this slide is just summing up the whole lesson. So here it says, find the number of ways you can arrange all of the letters in the word boundary. So when it asks you to arrange all of the letters, that's the factorial. So we're gonna count how many letters are in the word boundary, and there are eight. So for this part, for all the letters, we just do eight exclamation point. So you would be doing eight times seven times six times five times four, times three, times two, times one, and this gives you 40,320. Now, if you have the exclamation point on your calculator, you can just go ahead and hit eight factorial. Okay, all right, and then now we also wanna do take three of the letters of the word. So this is where we're gonna do the formula. So we're gonna do P and then eight and a three. So eight exclamation point over eight minus three. So eight exclamation point over five. Eight times seven times six times five. 
and I'm going to leave it as five exclamation point because I'm just going to cancel that. So then all I have to do is eight times seven times six, and then this answer is 336. Brianna, I'll go back to the slide after I finish this because I got one more minute, but I'll go back for you. Okay, then now to evaluate number two, we're going to do six exclamation point over six minus three. So this will be six over three, six times five times four times three. Stop there so the threes cancel. And then again, six times five is 30 times four is 120. And then for number three, I'm gonna do 14 exclamation point over 14 minus nine. 14 minus nine is five. So again, I'm gonna do 14 times 13 times 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, stop at 5. I could write out 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, but just to save time, cross off the 5s. And now I got to multiply 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And this is going to give me a grand total of 7, 2, 6, 4, 8, Five seven six zero. So seven hundred twenty-six million four hundred eighty-five thousand seven hundred sixty. And then the last one. This was just like the soccer and the chorus. So here, this time, there are eight students auditioning for the main role in a school play. The order of the student auditions is chosen at random. Find the probability that you're first, and your friend Petra is chosen second. So again, out of the eight, that was the total. And then once you take um, yourself out of the total and Petra, that only leaves six left. So then I would do six, five, actually, let's just leave it as six factorial over eight times seven times six factorial. The six is cancel, so I'm left with one over 56. That would be the probability that I get chosen first to audition and then my friend Petra. So that is it for 12.2. Your homework due on Wednesday is the 12.2 warm up and the 12.2 homework. Then on Wednesday, we'll go over it. And then on Wednesday, I'll teach you 12.3. That'll be due Friday. And then over the weekend, you're gonna be doing the test review because you have a test next week. Remember your project is due on Friday. Any questions? All right, let me go back to the previous screen for